Hi there, my name is Jason Schmaltz and I'm an AMGA single pitch instructor and today I want to show you how to escape the belay. This is a great technique to use when your climber has gotten stuck, uh, whether their hand is stuck in the wall or something of that nature and they can't get down uh, and you need to go get some help for them. Uh, so hey, if you like this content of this video, um, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We are trying to get a little bit more coverage uh, by the YouTube algorithm, so I really appreciate any subscribes. Uh, so the climber's stuck, and the very first thing I want to do uh, is go hands-free. So I've been belaying with an ATC, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the brake strand in brake mode, and while I do that, I'm going to pinch it against the ATC and pass a loop through the carabiner like that. Bring it up to where the climbing rope is and make a loop like that, kind of a small like half hitch. And then pass a bite through that half hitch. So I'm essentially making a slip knot. Uh, you can see I'm making the slip knot very close to the ATC, okay? And that's to allow or to minimize any kind of like knot slippage. And then now I have this kind of uh, bite strand here. And I'm going to go ahead and tie an overhand. Again, trying to stay, stack the knots very close to one another. Okay. And now I can go hands free. Okay. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and tie a catastrophe knot in the rope I'm about six feet down so that's just taking a bite doing an overhand on a bite and now if my system fails completely um, the furthest the climber is going to fall is about uh, maybe uh, six or seven feet okay so the next thing I want to do is find a ground anchor and for the sake of this video for timing I've already identified a ground anchor which is this tree root uh, but if you don't have a ground anchor you need to try to find that uh, at this point and take the back end of the climbing rope and tie around that anchor, okay, which I've already done. And so now I have um, a strand of climbing rope here uh, from that anchor, from that tree root, and I can go ahead and get a locking carabiner, and if I can find one, this one will do, put that right there. And I want to clove hitch this locking carabiner to the ground anchor. And the reason I want to clove hitch is I may want to adjust the length of this. I'm not quite sure how big the system's going to be yet um, as I uh, start to build this out. So we got that clove hitched. So that's good. Now my next goal is to get this climbing rope weight onto this ground anchor and off of me. So I'm still hands free here. The next thing I want to do in order to do just that is to tie a Prusik knot. You could also use a climb heist. It really is a Prusik hitch, not a Prusik knot. You could also use a climb heist though, like I said. And I'm doing about four wraps on a single strand here. Okay, and that is going to uh, bite pretty well. Okay, now if I had a longer Prusik loop, I wouldn't need to do this next part, but since I only have short Prusik loops, I need to extend this. So I will extend with a 240 centimeter sling. It should give me enough material to do what I need to do. So I'll clip that into a locking carabiner and lock those, okay? Uh, if I wanted to um, prevent any slippage, I could also do a clove right here, but um, I think this will be fine. And then uh, the next thing I need to do is connect to this ground anchor with a munter hitch because I want to transfer the load onto this Prusik, but I want to be able to come back into the system later. And if I don't do a munter, if I do like an overhand or something like that, then the system will be closed. I won't be able to get back in. So let's do a, a munter hitch here. So there's my munter, and I can pull that kind of tight. And then I can try to kind of milk it a little bit to get even more tight. 
So milking the munter is where you kind of pull on the belly of it uh, and then uh, pull the slack through a little bit more. And then I do similar to the knot I did on my ATC, I do a slip knot, okay? And then I have enough material here to then do an overhand on a bite. And that's my munter hitch, or my, my, my munter to a mule, sorry. Uh, then make sure all this is locked. Now it's still a little uh, flimsy. You're not gonna get it perfectly tight. Um, and that's why you still have this ATC, because now I can lower onto this. But I can push this up as best I can to get it as tight as I can, okay? And now I want to lower uh, off the ATC onto this system, okay? So, I will untie this knot. There might be a little pop right here, so just tell the climber, hey, you might feel a little pop when I pull this through, okay? And then pull that through the carabiner. And now I can lower onto I press it, okay? Now, <clears throat> while I still have my um, catastrophe knot in this, uh, in this rope, and I still have my ATC on, I can go ahead and build a clove um, off of this, I'm sorry, uh, a uh, anchor point off of this anchor on the climbing rope, because I don't just want to escape the system and leave the climber on a prussic hitch. Okay, so I'll take this 120 centimeter sling and bask it in. And then if you wanted to make this uh, redundant, you could do an overhand. Okay. And then I will take my locking carabiner like that. And now, again, I want to tie a munter. So there's my munter ready to go so I can lock this. And I'll go ahead and have it in break mode, but not super tight so I can take the ATC off. Okay. All right. And pull that tight. And then I will milk the munter again just to get it, just to minimize the amount that the climber is lowered when I go to shift the load back, okay? So now I have the munter on, now I gotta do the mule part. So I make the half loop or half hitch, pass a bite through it. And again, we're trying to stack the knot close. And then I will do my overhand on top of the half hitch, or the slip knot now. All right. And that looks good. And if I want extra security, I can take a non-locker and clip that loop in the climber's rope. But now I have to get back off this prussic. So I will untie my overhand here. Okay. And then I will pull through. Okay, and then you want to be pulling up, okay, in brake mode as you come out of that, and I can lower off of that, okay, and now I have my weight on this Munter Mule here on the climbing rope. So I can go ahead and take my carabiner back now, okay, I can Take my prussic off, take my sling back, okay, and grab my prussic, <clears throat> 
and now I'm ready to go get help. Okay, now when I come back from getting help, uh, I need to lower the client back down once the uh, people that are helping me tell me it's okay to do so. I could try to get back into the system, uh, but that's unnecessary because I already have a munter built that I can lower off of. Uh, one good thing uh, to do though is when you're lowering on a munter is to go ahead and back it up with a third hand or an auto block, which I'll do. So just do three wraps here, lock that, take this off and I'll untie my overhand and I'll pull through the slip knot. But remember, I want to pull up into brake. So here we go up. Okay, I'm in brake. And now I can lower my climber back down. Okay, and I have my third hand backing me up. Okay. Hey, I hope you found this content useful for Escape the Belay. Again, if you enjoyed it, I really encourage you to like and subscribe to our channel. Uh, we have a lot of great videos on uh, these types of rescue techniques, but also uh, climbing techniques and guide techniques. And hope I see you out there on the crag. Have a good one.